you have to do is trust me. <laughs> Jimmy Stewart, a star is born. <laughs> it's a wonderful star is born. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you a star. <laughs> Gonna throw a, throw a lasso around the music awards and pull it down for you. I, I'm just going out to the garage to get the Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Doc, Miss Residents. Welcome to episode two, day two of this week's episodes. Jesus. I, I went off book. Good God. What am I doing? What am I doing? Good Lord. I felt I came in so hot. <laughs> My name is producer Richard and across from me is the doctor himself. Hello. <laughs> it's Doc Miss Six. Yeah. And uh, we've never been more prepared. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cough Miss in, in both ways. Yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. From both ends. Yeah. And when we die, it'll be coffin miss. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, because no one will miss us when we're in the coffin. Yeah, yeah. Coffin miss. Well, yeah, they'll they'll try and just drop us from a height. We won't. Or is that like a is that <laughs> is that is that like a the, the name of the discount suicide girls? Oh no. Coffin I'm miss. I'm a coffin miss. That yeah, like when you're <laughs> you're writing a movie but you can't say Yeah, yeah. We're the coffin miss. We can't those. use the word suicide girl, so we'll never get past the censors. They'll be like coffin miss. Hell yeah, hell yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Insane. Yeah. Uh yeah, this is uh Also I'm assuming I'm assuming uh-huh. Jimmy Stewart, A Star is Born, is the cold open for this. <laughs> yeah. An insane bit off mic yeah. and a crazy way to come into this episode. <laughs> but I regret nothing. Tell me something, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I pissed myself at the music awards. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, so... Uh, this year, like every year prior, we will be releasing an episode every day for the 12 days leading up to Christmas. Until our demands are met. <laughs> That's right. I think you've made that. Yeah, I've almost certainly have. <laughs> you think we've done this six times and I haven't made every possible joke? Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, true. I probably right? did that after number one. Episode one of this podcast, we've made every joke. Yeah, we've yeah. just been repeating it for six years. By the way, don't go back and listen to episode one of this podcast. Please, God, don't. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that we've done this too long. <laughs> I don't know. I'm s- still having fun. Yeah. Uh, okay. Wow, that's a fun way to fun way to hear about that. That's okay. okay. I feel like I've been the signs have all been there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, saying it basically since episode one. Uh, all right. So uh, we are doing coffee cups of coffee every episode. That's right. Uh, and I'm already regretting it. So, really? You're feeling uh, it? Eh? I'm not feeling it, but I just like. That's just a lot of liquid to consume. Yeah. Uh, just a hot fucking liquid down yeah. my throat. It's a lot. Yeah. I mean, we will be recording probably, I'd say, a third of these episodes directly from the toilet. <laughs> but uh... yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a, it's, it's funny. That's a thing I haven't really thought about. And a thing that I didn't really think about before becoming a barista, which was. Right. Because you do a lot of like tasting stuff to make sure it's coming out right yes I'm, i know i know how it works <laughs> that's also the way that i have sex yeah uh <laughs> jesus just a little prep work beforehand tasting stuff before it goes make sure it's coming out right good lord <laughs> a little bit more pineapple this week uh so uh <laughs> christ did you listen to that new doughboys episode yeah the with the 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 gopher yeah <laughs> the groundhog that's what it was <laughs> Yeah, crazy. <laughs> Gobbling up them turds. Uh, but no, we are doing coffee every single episode. A cup of coffee every single episode, which is coming from this advent calendar. Oh, sorry. I already tasted it. No, that's all right. It's yeah. fine. You can't taste anyways. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but no, yeah, sorry. The story that I was telling, which was um, that... Uh, you hadn't considered the 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 toilet, the back, yes. e- the back end of our challenge. It's very funny. Is this really worse than all the hot sauces, though? Yeah. Is the, it? Well, the hot sauce is hurt after. Yeah. This is going to hit me in the middle of it. Oh, right. Okay. So uh, the thing is, is yeah, I know that your relationship with the toilet is a little all over the place. It's intimate. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
next to you, it's the one that understands me most in this world. Yeah. Uh, uh, too intimately. Forensically yeah. understands me. <laughs> <laughs> I um it's a thing that like my business partner had to learn about me which was like you couldn't like schedule meetings at certain times. Yeah, you do have like a strange regularity yes. to your schedule. I don't think it's that strange. I and I a, don't. You, I never know it's happening until it's happening. <laughs> until you're in the middle. Of yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a countdown. Go and... get, go schedule meetings. We'll we'll see. Roll the dice. Yeah, I'll take that I'll take that chance. It's typically like within a sip of coffee, it's within the hour um interesting yes which is like so like by the time i get like i was working nine to five in the office for a long time and so it would like sip of coffee at nine as soon as i got there and basically don't schedule anything for 10 o'clock yeah i mean it was it you yeah 10 o'clock basically every day because it was funny because when we would start recording ghost facers on sunday yeah. morning i'd show up at 10 and then we would not start recording until like 10 30 yeah and i'd be like why Yes, I mean I like hanging out, but we aren't hanging out. I'm just in your house while you're shitting, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> Which is like a weird insight into our friendship too. Yeah, yep. I just like being near <laughs> while you're going through something. Listen, man. I sorry. I, just... <laughs> I almost got too sincere there. I know. I always like the pauses where I'm like, oh, he's com- he- he's contemplating something actual seriously right now. Yeah. 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 We don't want to do that. Yeah. I mean, my brain needs to like really process that. <laughs> it's a full shutdown <laughs> in happening when it's a real thought is in my head. Of course. Um, but yeah. So now working at the cafe, I'm like drinking coffee, like and testing all morning. And right. then it's like, and then people show up and I'm like, oh no. You just need like a piss bucket behind the counter. <laughs> just shit bucket. Just like. <laughs> That was a latte you wanted. Why is there just that open drain in the center of the floor? <laughs> That'd be really funny. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, I've I've like learned to to like white knuckle through it, but uh, I mean, Jesus, yeah. I'm, how are you doing that? Uh, dealing with it. I'm dealing with it. Good lord. Yeah, on busy days, I deal with it. Uh, but so what you're saying is you could have been dealing with it the whole time. Sure. I didn't have to sit by myself. <laughs> I get yeah, sure. Uh, huh. It's kind of part of it. <laughs> I need you around. <laughs> it's the only way I can shit. Yeah. <laughs> and come. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but yeah, no. It's so uh, I'm curious. That is a component of this that I hadn't really put a lot of foresight into. That's but that's fair. Let's talk about this first cup. All right. Let's the do second it. cup. Second cup. Boo. Boo. Second cup. Oh. Oh. Oh yeah, I, I even forgot that was a brand. Yeah. That's how bad they are. Yeah, Toronto. I used to get second cup when I worked in the mall in Cambridge. Sure, I mean because were... it was right out. Like there was, they had like in the like in the middle of the mall, they'd have the kiosk. They never had like an actual yeah. uh, thing, and it was right outside where I worked at RW and Co. Yeah. It's Canada's... and so I would get that sometimes. And I think at for the time I was at the time I was like, it's not Starbucks. But it was like it uh, is though. I it, should have it, just gotten Starbucks. It's Canadian it, Starbucks, and Starbucks is better. Yeah, yeah, it's it's Canadian Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. It's Canada's version of third wave coffee when Tim Hortons is basically second and now trying to do third wave and no one wants it. Well, yeah. Why would they? Uh, yeah. Uh, so this one's from Ethiopia. Uh, All right. Uh, again, this is like a this is cradle closer. of life. This is a bit lighter of a roast for sure. Um, probably like nearing the sort of like a middle. Um, a light roast, like a true light roast, is almost like a tea like. Yeah. Uh, but a ton of flavor in that. But um, this one, uh, th- these are all roasted in Denmark. Um, but I mean, I, I don't have the vocabulary for yeah. like actual tasting notes, but I can, I'm, I, I, I'm getting flavors out of yeah. it. Yeah. You're getting a lot of I will more say, fruitiness. since we did work with a coffee roaster and I learned about, you know the kind of history of dark roast the kind of like commercial history of dark yeah, roast and yeah. stuff like that i do tr- kind of seek out more light yeah. medium stuff now because you're actually getting like differentiation i, I mean i'm i'm still a pretty utilitarian coffee drinker yeah. but i'm now i'm like okay there's actual like stuff i can get into here it's i mean it's one of my favorite parts is like pulling out flavors i mean yeah. you could, the roast really does a lot of that work but you can still as a barista you there's a lot especially with espresso you get a lot more sort of like latitude with that yeah um but uh it is kind of in a way the perfect job for you there's so many little points of minutiae and like yeah. technical skill areas where it's like 
between even the step of someone roasted it and now it's in my cup. There's like 20 things you can do yeah. or change or like manipulate yeah. and just be like, let's see. It's like that's you at like a giant soundboard. Like, yes. do it, like you're mixing the show live. Baby. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. It's, I, it's kind of the perfect job for you in a, in a way. It's feeding into like some of my like mental health issues in yeah. a fun way. Uh, but, I mean, is it a good vent? Or is it making it worse? I don't know. Uh, I think it's good because I, can I see it being constructive. Yes. Like take a thing that you're doing anyway and apply it to. Yeah, I've gotten you know. to point it uh, at something rather than uh, people. Sure. Um, yeah. Which has been nice. Yeah, that's uh, fair, yeah. And it's yeah, it's very satisfying in that way because you can really like test and and, and I mean it's a you're creep. a little bit of like a mad scientist. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You could put the, the like. <laughs> Yeah. in the back and you'd be like yes <laughs> more volts eggnog latte yeah. uh but yeah it's it's been very fun there is the component we're having to like teach other people how to do it which is like the part i'm slightly afraid of sure um because you don't like relinquishing control and because people can't do it as well as me uh but we're dealing with that i mean the there is a technically true aspect of that. Yes. But they would if you taught them and yeah, relinquish yeah. control. Well, and I teach, but also like when it gets really busy, I have to do it myself. You don't have to. But anyway, so uh, uh, yeah, this is a good cup. I'm not going to put anything in this one. This is really yeah, I like I, I like a light roast. Um, this is like right is like because just on the cusp of medium, so you're getting still a lot of that like really great sugars to make this like a thicker cup. So you're not needing like more coffee if that's what you're looking for. It's not tea like yet, but yeah. a ton of sour in there, good fruit. Yeah, it's nice. I, I like it. Again, I, I sort of I lack the the vocabulary and the sense of smell. Well, and here's the thing for, for this, but uh, but I I've I at least can pick out a palpable difference yeah. between having light roast coffee and like picking up that there are like these other components, these other flavors at work as opposed to even a well-made dark roast that it's pretty, you know, uniform, even if it's good, not just burnt. I don't necessarily, I can't like distinguish things in it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like the thing with like, there's so much, controversy within the world of like coffee tasting because right. like the, the um like coffee organizations have tried to put out like f like flavor wheels and stuff like that oh, okay and so much of it is bullshit like right. some of them have like these like microscopic like this is like this has strawberry and like the and, and like but is it is it like uh is it like whiskey where it's not that it actually has strawberry in it but like tasting notes because tasting notes in whiskey are like whatever your heart tells you yeah. you just say it it's you can versus pull... like wine that I think has like pretty governable kind of tasting note, uh, like things, ways to describe. They things haven't and figured it like out, that. and I yeah, think that's yeah. the problem. <laughs> the thing that everybody can agree on is like there is there's basically like four tastes that you can go for, which is sour, sweet, bitter, and salt. Oh, the f the four tastes. Yes. That's well, the only thing people can really. Agree it's funny with. that it's only those four though, because there's an umami, the other one. You would think that the earthy okay. thing would be a coffee. Umami thing. has been kind of proven to be bullshit. What? Yeah. Oh, it's, I've been using it to describe so many things. Yeah. Anytime I taste a mushroom. Yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, yeah, it's it's unfortunately kind of bullshit. It's a lot. It's more, not an actual thing. Eh? It, 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 it depending on who you ask. I Interesting. think. Interesting. Uh, like, I mean, probably still a useful descriptor because it yeah, does. Yeah kind of capture the general idea of earthiness yes. yeah even if really it's not just, an actual flavor you're really just talking about like a combination of salt sour and bitter right and you're just pulling out sweet basically uh interesting but it's well, fair enough yeah. yeah yeah it's kind of bullshit but right uh anyway orange is not a primary color umami is yes. not an actual flavor but you can still describe something as umami yes because that's what it is. Yeah. exactly gotcha all right uh let's get into the questions oh yeah <laughs> Docmas episode two. Uh, we're going over to Facebook. Go to the face and the book. Go to the Facebook. First question come from Ryan Putney. Oh, Ryan Putney. And maybe his foot over line of other country. Yes. <laughs> I put knee in Kiev. <laughs> <laughs> Not funny to joke about a thing that's terrible. Uh, anyways. I mean, also, good luck putting your knee in Kiev, Russia. Yeah, you fucking bitch. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Fuck, we're political. Yeah, we, we showed them. We're going after that political Putin's award. quaking in his boots. Yeah, yeah, we're going for that news political award. 
Mr. President, have you heard the latest Dr. DC podcast? No, I'm behind. What, uh, what happened this it week? It is Dogma 6. I think they might fuck at the end. Oh, shit. It comes That's back. Transylvanian. I don't know what I'm doing. Blah. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> Did Richard finally return? <laughs> hey, with bated breath. Yeah, fucking masturbated breath. Can't believe that this whole time all I had to do was just drive over here the way I've done for six years. Yeah, weird that you would make that decision. Anyways, Ryan Putney asks, if Marvel were to take a DC storyline and adapt it to make a similar storyline with one of their characters, which one would you think they could do successfully? For example... I think Marvel could do a Tower of Babel slash Justice League Doom type storyline. Right. So, you know, you know the, the Tower of Babel example is the one where Batman's contingency plans get stolen and yeah. used against the Justice League. Now, I, I don't know enough Marvel. I imagine just in the way that, like, there's only so many things out there yeah there are probably some marvel analogous stories that already exist so yeah, yeah, we yeah. might we'll say, probably step over some stuff well, that exists. we might say one that is a thing yeah, 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 yeah but uh is there like a dc story or event that you've read that you'd be interested in it's a marvel equivalent I mean, that's interesting right because i think that um a lot of stuff like a lot of the like Secret organization stuff. Marvel's done a pretty decent job with that, and Shield really works as a great analogy for like analogous type organization yeah. to do a lot of like secret behind the scenes stuff like that. I'm trying to think of like stuff that I have that I really would love to see adapted to that. Like I don't want a Mister Miracle type thing because that's such like a, a, a I mean, self basically vision. Is it? They're probably not. Just, <laughs> they kind of look alike, I guess. But oh, was king. Yeah. <laughs> um. I mean, a Gotham Central type thing would be interesting to see them do. Okay, so then what would the but but like because the problem is is like but like just with the NYPD or is there like a a different like uh police force or like organization you'd want to see the day to day of. Because I think the Shield books already exist, right? Like, oh, is there a Shield book? Because I, I guess that would be it. Yeah. If not, like they must have it. But if not, that would be something that would. Be I mean, Gotham Central, you know, by being cops, not even like Argus or something. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? It is pretty grounded. Yeah, that'd be interesting. But I think something else that probably comes right to mind, <coughs> and I don't know if they have a similar type of thing, but like a an Arkham Asylum -y type of thing would be nice. Yeah, it, it's funny because I, I they they must have. A place where they put bad guys, right? Like, like, what is the place in that New Mutants movie? Oh, yeah. Like, that must be... That's a school, isn't it, though? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, um, but, I mean, where... Uh, like, wherever... what, I was, what I was trying to say is I can name a few prisons in Marvel. Yeah. You know, but I can't... Insane asylums don't really exist. Do Arkham... Or, or, I mean, they, they must. There's yeah. no way that they haven't done a story with, a, sure. with an asylum. But I, I can't think of it, you know, like as being... Arkham is iconic, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting. What about you? Because Tower of Babel is in the thing, I was, I've was i been thinking about it a bit, and I was trying to think of, like, who would be the one that had all the contingency plans, and I keep coming back to Iron, Iron Man. Man. Yeah. It, mostly because he's sort of, like... He's the Batman, like... Well, he's, like, he has a sort of, like, an ego thing. He has the resources. Yeah. And also, I think I think he would just think, like, well, no one's going to hack my system. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's safest with me, sort of thing. I don't know if they've ever done that, but, like, if Tony had a... Yeah, I mean, he, he does, in the comics, like, he has the Hulkbuster armor. Yeah. There's been, like, a... There's one for Thor. Like, he kind of has the contingency thing. they tend to just be armors but you know like he does have that kind of element to him who would steal it in tower of babel it's it's uh Ra's al ghul in justice league doom it's vandal savage um but you know like so like dr doom i don't know does that seem below doom to do that yeah i i don't i don't know i it's an interesting question it's it's tough without really knowing Marvel well enough. Like my my Marvel knowledge, I I know the MCU. Yeah, I know like broad strokes stuff from the comics, yeah. and I know you know kind of broad strokes differences between the comics and the movies of main characters. Yeah, but I that that would be tricky. I Ooh. guess um, 
maybe um um I'd love to see a kingdom come but maybe with right, something right. like with like Thor, maybe. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, here's the thing with the the mutant contingency that going on within Marvel, it would be interesting to see. It's like, well, what happens if like mutants like they just keep duplicating, right? And so, what if we shoot right. in the future and like something like seventy five percent of the population, the is opposite mutants. of old man Logan. Yeah, basically. yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What if like seventy five percent of like mutants are, are, are like people are mutants? Yeah. And like are sort of running amok, and then you go to Thor, who maybe is like not needed in the way that he was because he's less like godly he, then, and they yeah. go to him, and they're, he's been fucking like out, uh, like. But and, but you you're you're picking Thor. Because he's more of like a power yes. archetype to Superman. Yeah, yeah. And somebody who's still be to, around. As opposed to someone like Cap. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Cap would be interesting too, because I mean, especially if you I might... was thinking Cap just because of like the Superman-ness of it, but I you're you're right though that there's a power component. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's interesting. You I could was... also do like a st- uh, all-star superman kind of thing with him too i was gonna say like forever evil like oh, okay. i'm sure they've done this sort of thing but a thing where like the avengers get like sidelined we don't know what's happened to them they could be dead yeah. the you bad know, guys come out yeah. maybe it's the doppelgangers whatever like you could do the full crime syndicate kind of thing sure. with them or not but the villains team up to save the world yeah. you know you put together essentially what i guess what I'm, is uh lord havoc and the extremists but you do it in marvel you put together Doctor Doom and Magneto yeah, and sure. uh, Dormammu, and like they come together and they save the world from whatever that other threat is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe that. I'm sure that exists. And Let someone, us know. Someone will point me to it. Yeah, yeah. Please, we would love to to hear any of those. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, uh, let's go to the next question. Sure. Uh, from Twitter. That's 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 Twitter. First question and only question from Twitter comes from Batman out of Hell. Oh yeah, like a Batman out of Hell. Go when the morning comes. Save it. You got to use those pipes in a second. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. fuck. <laughs> How come comic books in the West aren't adapted into TV like manga is adapted in Japan, as in a direct adaptation? I, I Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, read. I don't watch enough of it to kind of know. Manga? But there does seems to no like anime, right? <laughs> but there does seems to uh, seem to be <coughs> a practice of like relatively literal faithful adaptation. You sure, know, not yeah. really straying, and, and, and I don't I don't know why culturally that is the case. There is generally a thing of like people of if people like that story, then they already know the twist, yeah, so we can't just yeah, do it yeah, again. Yeah. And they're missing the point. They think the point was that we didn't know what the, the twist was coming. That, or that's what makes a good story. Or that is the twist surprised. is the best part of it. It's like, no. I mean, that's the problem with DC for I mean, it's, decades. It's the yeah. problem with Western storytelling. Yeah, yeah. Like, look at how like prestige TV works now, where it's like everything is like a mystery. Or, like, who is the... And you yes. reveal it in episode five, and then episode six, the thing happens. Yeah. They don't have to be like... like no. There's, we're losing a narrative component of like uh what's it called uh, is, is it is it pathetic fallacy it's like i can't remember but like we the audience knows yeah. you're trying to you're trying to watch the character find it out that's what's so good about that's Columbo. the dra- that's the dramatic tension of this shit like we should know right away we could even know how they did it but it's watching like we have that knowledge and they don't and we see them make a mistake or take a wrong turn and that there's tension in that and i i think we've kind of lost an element of that in our in our storytelling and that's certainly part of it i think um certainly in dc animated things you know when they do hush or they do yeah. long halloween it's like well people are going to know it's alberto falcone we better change it up and it's like no it like doesn't the- matter like we kind of just want to watch it you know uh, I don't mind like little changes because the medium is different. But when they do that, just it's like we still have to get you. I mean, I don't think anybody wants that. Yeah. So it uh, it is people taking the wrong. God forbid Hawk ends up being the. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, totally. That that piece of it too. You know, sometimes you want a twist. That's totally fine. And sometimes you want a bit of mystery. That's totally fine. But my problem is not everything is a twist, and not everything is a mystery, and we. There are other ways of storytelling that we're losing yes. by not doing that. And yeah. and then when someone does it, they go like, that's not how you do it. Like, 
it's they're, bubble gum. It's it's fucking candy, and I and it's like, yeah. I, it's it's sure it's cheap and easy to do. It's like jump scares and horror, right? Like, it's like we yeah, should, they're fun, yeah. but like, it's that's not what makes good writing. Like, well, yeah, and I mean, like the thing that should make the adaptation worthy is that that thing that was on the page. We've yeah. got captivating performances that'll bring that to life for you, and that could be enough. It you don't have to be surprised. You yeah. could be just. Uh, what's the word like satisfied that they did it that yeah. they brought it to life that you hear a voice now like the voice that was only in your head when you were reading it now you hear it and you go oh my god what a great performance yeah. it's heartbreaking the way that they actually say that or you know yeah, we are missing some of that I don't know why culturally that's a thing I suspect it comes down to some version of like capitalism commercialism yes. that it's like we can't sell the same thing twice but who knows Um. all right Let's go to the next question, which means we're leaving Twitter and heading on over to DocScord. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, DocScord, baby. <laughs> Send a little <laughs> question to me to read. <laughs> I like that you're doing the movements as well. Oh, be awful good doc. <laughs> Send to me. DocScord, baby. Yeah. Ask me about your comics tonight. Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, first question from the dog's guard. Uh, I'm ready. I mean, I so am I after that performance. You're welcome. <laughs> Just got to get you torqued up for episode 12. I'm like a heart as a candy cane right now. Easy. Uh, Shaped the same, too. Want a lick? Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's those like weird sweet flavored ones. Are they all? Well, no, like the ones that are like caramel. And oh, stuff. yeah. No, I, like, that's I, not I, what a fucking candy cane is. I don't fuck is. with that, yeah. yeah. Mint or bust. Yeah, it is red and Mint white. and bust. It's red and white, weirdly. Oh, I don't <laughs> I'll know, get it man. Chipped out. Uh, first question comes from Chan180, uh, who asks, <laughs> Poirot, David uh, Suchet versus- Suchet, you whatever. fucking Claude. <laughs> versus uh, Benoit Blanc. Yeah, I mean, David Suchet's Poirot is iconic. He's the guy that played him on like Masterpiece Theater and shit yeah. like that. Uh, not, David Suchet, not Kenneth Brada and his sure. insane yeah, yeah, mustache. Yeah. Um, David Suchet, incredible actor. Yeah, his Poirot is amazing. Yeah, or Benoit Blanc, the like uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken uh, character that uh, Daniel Craig plays in Knives Out. Oh, sure. Uh, like, who do I like better as a character or as a as a just says detective v or who wins in a fight. I don't know. It just says V. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> D yeah. Dawn of. <laughs> um, Dawn of crime fight. I mean, it could still be Dawn of justice. Like I think, I mean, David Suchet's Poirot as also has a legacy. Yeah. Hard to compete with that. You know, we're just getting the second installment glass onion of Benoit Blanc. I heard it's good. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm very excited, but I got to say, He's so charming, and I love the I love the like the kind of folksy like a, a donuts hole in a it's donuts, donuts hole. hole. Yes, uh, confounds me. You know, he just it's very fun. I love the way he talks. I love all of that kind of stuff. Um, I think I think the Poir the performance of Poirot is great, but Poirot is a less likable character. Poirot is not like. Not really a character you like love. You yeah. know what I mean? Like is that, is that Murder on the Orient Express? Is that Poirot? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I, 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 I say Johnny Depp. <laughs> I, I don't think he's as uh, likable a character as Benoit Blanc, but performance-wise, David Suchet played him a bunch, and it's iconic. It's a more iconic role than Benoit Blanc so far. Sure. I guess I'm saying I like Benoit Blanc because <laughs> generally I'm I excusing side, myself from saying in ben general Blanc. I just say I, I go with like what do I enjoy more yes you know and I think it's that fair yeah cool question you say it what's your pick uh, David Suchet as a person <laughs> yeah yeah I love when he solves crimes yeah ones that I've committed against his family your your David Suchet's yeah <laughs> Uh, all right, last question from the Doc Squad comes from First Mage, who asks, would you rather have your lifespan or Vandal Savage's lifespan? 
Easy question. Mine. Yeah, because you. The, whatever, Why would I want to live longer than I am? I want to. I want Vandal Sav. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, you we just, talked about this. <laughs> yeah, you just want time to perfect whatever it is you're working on. I think the only problem with Vandal Savage's lifespan is that, like. I think my my need to perfect things becomes less necessary when I have a, all of eternity. I mean, that's the theory. Yeah. Or you'll just just you need to perfect everything. Yeah. Um. Here's the here's the thing. That question got posed, and and I'm not gonna blow up. I don't want to blow up your spot too much, but they were like, I think it's an interesting, difficult question. And in general, <coughs> I agree. Talking about immortality and. The f- yeah. philosophically what does it mean to be immortal versus eternal would we yeah. stay young would we age you know all those things very interesting but in the context of this podcast you <laughs> got you got to know i'm picking the earliest possible time to die yeah and you got to know that i want all of time yeah yeah i mean i just cuz then i get more i would n- i would never what a curse. <laughs> even if you could still die i'd be like you'd, i'd be like 75 and i'd be like all right <laughs> be like, you know, you got immortality. I'd be like, I'm fine. Yeah, but now it's up to me, and that's what I like. Yeah, it's the control of it. <laughs> yeah, I, <didn't> see that. <laughs> I want all of attorney so that I can cut it off whenever I feel like. Also, I saw someone on the doc score went, "That's easy. They'd pick eternal life." It's like, no. do, you, do you listen? <laughs> do you even know us? Yeah, the easy answer is I want to die. <laughs> hey, hey, comedy! <laughs> Funniest podcast in Canada. Well, that was the last question for this episode. Cool note to end on. Yep, uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, find us on all the social media platforms, baby, uh, including calls. Hive. Are we on Hive? I am on Hive. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you did yeah. show that. Yeah, which has been fun, although it was down for a few days because they were like, "There's too many people." <laughs> It's like they weren't ready. I do like. There was no reason for them to have been ready, and that's not like a slam on them. But they were like, their system could not handle the like exodus. I do like that Hive and Vine have both existed. Yeah, because it's like the bands that existed at the same time, the Hives and the Vines. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a reference for no one (laughs) for our age who liked music. I don't know. (laughs) Do you like music, or do you just like knowing things people don't know? Anyways, uh, you can uh, give us reviews, go on our website, subscribe to our Patreon. Yeah, patreon.com slash DrDC. Uh, also, we have another podcast. Yeah, Ghost Facers, Supernatural Rewatch. That's right. And that is it for today. Adios. Ciao, ciao. The all the super, super They always fight for what is right. Live with danger and adventure. They are men of might. This was a Brain Freeze podcast. <laughs>